Ready. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV. Now, yesterday, Monday, I had a chance to speak to Dr. Olive Kobusinje as she, after she launched the patient hat book uh, that chronicles the sacrifices of Ugandan medical practitioners as a whole. Well, Ms. Kobusinje herself, a medical practitioner and a prolific author, is the brain behind the book that graphically illustrates the sacrifices and greed in Uganda's health sector and honors uh, the heroism of men and the women who work tirelessly to do their best to work in a collapsed system. I spoke to her yesterday and a part of her colleagues about Uganda's health system. Take a listen. You're watching Morning at NTV. This is Morning at NTV and many thanks for staying with us. My name is Romeo Busiku. Our next conversation is going to be centered around the ailing healthcare system in Uganda. One too many times we've been talking about the ailing patient and the poor services they get in hospitals. But what about the mental health of the doctors who work upon the patients? That's the $64,000 question that some uh, that my guests are going to be answering. One of them is the author of the book called The Patient. I'll give you a brief preamble about that book. Now, The Patient is the story of Ugandan doctors and their patients through the decades. It's the story of mostly young, enthusiastic medical students becoming doctors and choosing their path in a corrupt and impoverished world where their own needs, well-being and sanity competes with the needs of their patients. Now, it is the story of a hospital badly in need of healing. I think you get the gist of the story right about now. I have the author of the book, Olive Kobus Sinje, she's here with me in studio. She's not alone. She's also with Dr. Juliet Naku. She's the senior consultant, uh, psychiatrist, deputy executive director, Butarika Hospital, right there in the middle. And on the far left, we are also joined by Dr. Hafsa Lukwata. She's the acting assistant commissioner, mental health and control of substance abuse, Ministry of Health. Many thanks for joining me on set right here in morning at NTV, ladies. A very good morning. Good morning. Let me start with you, Miss Olive Kobusinje. The book is so compelling. I've read a few lines, and I could tell you that, yes, there's something going on, not only to the patients, but the mental health of the doctors. But we would like to know, the viewer would like to know, where did you draw the inspiration that guided the narrative that you used while writing this book? Uh, thank you very much, Romeo. Mm -hmm. um, so where did I get the inspiration? And I'd have to say that I think I got this inspiration from the patients. Mm -hmm. The patients are always central. Um, I, I worked for many years in Mulago Hospital mm -hmm. uh, as a junior doctor, mm -hmm. as a resident, you know, as a senior nurse officer, training to be a specialist. Mm -hmm. I worked there as a surgeon mm -hmm. in the accident and emergency department uh, for many years, and so I saw lots and lots of patients. Mm -hmm. My life actually rotated around a patient, as the lives of many doctors. Um, I then moved away and went into research, and, and whenever I came back to this hospital, and I was, I, I've never been far away from the hospital, mm. is I'd be struck by mostly younger doctors that would, would sometimes seem to take these very abnormal conditions under which they worked, almost as though they were okay, they were normal, mm. um, you know, extreme uh, scarcity patients that um, are uncared for, maybe too many patients for health workers, but a lot of times also um, inadequate supplies, uh, procedures don't happen, maybe there is no equipment, so patients suffer, patients die. Uh, and at times I thought, well, they, they seem to sort of take it along the stride, but as I dug deeper, I realized, no, no doctor, no matter how junior, mm -hmm. no matter how inexperienced mm -hmm. wants to see their patients suffer. Mm -hmm. No doctor wants to, see, to lose patients, Indeed. especially lose patients mm -hmm. when they know they could save them. Mm -hmm. And so I came across lots of doctors that were either leaving the, the profession entirely mm -hmm. and doing something totally different and telling you why they left, mm -hmm. or I, I've met health workers, not just doctors, nurses, midwives, anesthetists, that work under a great deal of stress, that will tell you how they're tired of losing patients, mm -hmm. And you realize that while on the face of it they seem to be coping, really they mm -hmm. are not doing well. Mm -hmm. And so I started to realize that actually we don't just have the patients that we think are the patients. Mm -hmm. The people that work in this healthcare setting are in a way 
professions themselves. Mm -hmm. I actually have also come across a lot of health workers that do become patients mm -hmm. for some reason or mm -hmm. another. They need a cesarean section or they have a baby that needs an operation. Mm -hmm. They can't afford these procedures in the hospitals where they work. Uh, is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how is it like to work in a system where you deliver care, but when it's your turn to get care, it's either unavailable or you can't afford it. Oh my How's goodness. How's that? How's that? That can cause serious mental health problems. Absolutely. Every day. Uh, or maybe it's not them, but they're seeing their colleagues. We have colleagues that have been unwell mm. and they're in their homes and we don't have the facilities to take care of them. Mm -hmm. They have worked for years, decades, some of them. But now it's their time of need. And this healthcare system that we've developed, that we've worked in, that we've developed, it's not able to take care of its own. Wow. This is some of my inspiration. So I, I have tons of stories about patients themselves. I have stories about the people that look after these patients. But I also have stories about us as a nation. How patient can we be? How patient we can we be? Patient. Over the years, we exactly. are the patient. We've been patient enough. Okay. Now, let me also uh, engage Dr. Juliet Naku. You're a senior consultant psychiatrist at Butarika Hospital. Yes. Now, help us understand, what is the scale of the mental health problem in Uganda's hospitals, especially amongst our doctors? Thank you, Romeo. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. But I would like to address it broadly. Indeed. The world over, mm -hmm. doctors and other health workers do develop psychological problems mm -hmm. and mental ill health Indeed. generally. Most of what they have is distress from various factors, from uh, the things that are happening around them, just like everybody else around them, mm -hmm. but also from their work environment and the stress that is involved. On the whole, the world over, many doctors suffer things like anxiety disorders, they suffer depression, major depression, they suffer extreme stress that leads to what we call burnout. At a rate of about 10% mm. of the doctors and other health workers generally. They also suffer things like suicide and alcohol and substance abuse problems at a quite high rate, in fact, wow. about 30%. In Uganda, unfortunately, we have not had very systematic studies about doctors and health workers and their mental health, ill health. Mm -hmm. So we, we cannot quote very definite figures mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. but for sure, increasingly, mm -hmm. we are seeing these problems. Mm -hmm. We are seeing these problems in the health facilities where we go to visit because we regularly do support supervision visits. Mm -hmm. So we go around the country mm -hmm. and we find these things happening. Actually, we get requests. They say, doctor, now that you're here, mm -hmm. help us talk about stress because all our health workers seem to be stressed. We get that yeah. in, in regions, in health centers, lower health centers, district hospitals. It's a very common request. In Botanica Hospital, we do see some of these doctors and other health workers being brought to us on a regular basis uh, with problems like substance abuse, usually alcohol and prescription drugs. That's very mm. common because they have access to these prescription drugs mm. and when they are stressed, mm. they use them as a source of um, of relief mm. for their, their symptoms. So it is a huge and I think a growing problem. Indeed. And it is something that we need to address. Amazing. The good thing we have an official mm -hmm. from the Ministry of Health, Dr. Hafsa Lukwata. She's the assistant uh, acting assistant commissioner of mental health and control of substance abuse in the Ministry of Health. Now, please help us understand how much psychosocial support is the Ministry of Health offering our doctors in Uganda as a whole on a yearly basis? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Romeo. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the way I, I'll bring it up is also going to be very broad. Mm -hmm. It's not only to doctors. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like uh, Olive was mentioning, that um, maybe the systems are just going down as certain things are breaking. Mm -hmm. But there's been a system in place where health workers are actually catered for within the health facilities, mm -hmm. either the ones that they're working in or mm -hmm. even of their choice. Mm -hmm. 
like someone can choose for as long as you're a health worker, for as long as you're a doctor or wherever you are, you can be treated, you can be taken care of in whatever facility that you wanted. At least I have ever experienced that. Maybe until lately when things became so financialized, everything is you have to pay, you have to pay. I think that's when the problem comes in. Otherwise there was that, um, that, that, that there was a way of helping doctors or whoever was working within a health facility to actually get care. And the only problem would come in, perhaps if like you had to be uh, maybe taken abroad, if you have to go abroad, that's when things would maybe now become a bit different. But that said, <coughs> for me, I think there are different ways of how we can, we've been able to facilitate or we should help our, our doctors to appreciate that that's something that is being done mm -hmm. to help their mental health. Mm -hmm. The first thing is uh, <coughs> having uh, leaders in place. For instance, we have the medical superintendents. When you come in, you're, you're, present, you're told that this is your boss, this is your, your medical superintendent, this may be the head of department, and even you're shown the colleagues that you're supposed to work mm -hmm. with. This kind of uh, system or network mm. helps you because in mental health, it's not about uh, maybe a health worker, a psychiatrist. Even your next door, I mean, the person that you talk with, the person that you work with, is supposed to help you mentally. Mm. Yes. When you do your work, you know, you can, like, I'm going out a few hours, please take care of my patients. That kind of thing can just help you sort, sort your mental health somehow. So, having leaders in place within the health facilities is so useful mm -hmm. like you have someone to report to you have someone to talk with you have someone to delegate services to mm -hmm. in case you have a problem mm -hmm. that's one thing the other thing is about the salary mm -hmm. all health workers who are working and employed mm -hmm. are actually getting their salaries mm -hmm. and uh, i want to say that lately the salaries have been improved and i think we're grateful mm -hmm. for what is happening only that they've taken a bit of a while so people are still in the other old mood of this been very little very little but mm -hmm. Currently, it's at least manageable. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we are doing, and we want to help our, um, you know, the health workers to appreciate that once you have a salary, at least that's a, that's a starting mm -hmm. point to boost your morale and, and help you carry on your work. The other thing are the allowances. The allowances have also always been there. Uh, there's high, there's a lunch allowance, and in many of the facilities, we're also seeing. Um, uh, constructions going on for housing so once someone has has some house in which they have been put and uh, they're having some lunch mm -hmm. we feel that this person can actually stay at their place of work and continue to to really work mm -hmm. uh, let's, first, let's first leave it at that i'll mm -hmm. come back to you mrs ha dr hafsa mm -hmm. because we have a little bit like eight minutes left okay. so dr olive i would like to know the sacrifice that doctors are making in your book you contend that doctors are putting their lives on the line their mental well-being on the line, their own life on the, at risk just to make sure that the patient is well taken care of. So what is the weight of the sacrifice doctors have to make uh, in this ailing healthcare system? So, Romeo, unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes that sacrifice is the ultimate. Do patient, doctors have died treating patients. Mm -hmm. and, and we have many examples. Indeed. In the All over, yes. I talk about uh, Matthew Lukuya, who mm -hmm. everyone, most people would know, mm -hmm. died fighting Ebola. Indeed. And so that's, that is the icon. And the latest, the coronavirus icon, doctor who died. Absolutely. Yes. But that icon represents a huge bulk of health workers mm. that have contracted HIV AIDS, mm. that have contracted hepatitis, that have contracted lots of other illnesses mm. because there weren't enough protectives. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that happened accidentally. It's something that is out of sheer neglect mm -hmm. to give people that work in a high risk area things to protect their own lives, mm -hmm. to protect the lives of their families. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, while I, I acknowledge what uh, I have said saying, mm. I think that there's a whole lot that could be done to protect the lives of the workers mm -hmm. and I also think that uh, quite aside from that the stressors are known so there's working in a high-risk environment mm -hmm. there's working um, ridiculous hours mm -hmm. dealing with a huge workload uh, she hasn't mentioned anything about interns intern mm -hmm. doctors um, quite often work around the clock mm -hmm with very little supervision. So they bear a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. They are young doctors, they've just come out. They're probably going to attempt this procedure mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. And nobody's there to walk them through to hold their hand. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So 
if anything happens to this patient, they're going to carry the burden of that mm. the rest of their professional lives. Indeed. So we subject young doctors, mm. young health professionals to mm -hmm. a great deal of stress. Indeed. That is completely unwarranted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, mm, yes. You know, so I think it's not good enough to say, well, let's train them, let's give them a bed, mm -hmm. let's give them enough food to eat, and then let's have them go out there and treat Ugandans. Mm -hmm. I think that while we put the patients of life, of the patients' lives at risk mm -hmm. for sure, mm -hmm. we also put a tremendous burden on the health worker. Understood very well. Dr. Juliet, you also hinted on the magnitude of the stress and how it's affecting the mental health of the doctors. Mm -hmm. But then we would like to talk solutions. What are the possible solutions we could employ in the interim to arrest this situation and help our doctors vis-a-vis -vis the patients? The solutions, I believe, are twofold. Mm -hmm. One is deal with the causes. The other is treat the condition mm -hmm. when it happens. Dealing with the causes, I believe, is in the realm of Ministry of Health mm -hmm. to help us improve the system. Mm -hmm. They have tried, the Ministry has tried. Mm -hmm. Some efforts have been made. I think more needs to be done mm -hmm. and the journey just begun. Mm -hmm. But we are on that journey. Mm -hmm. If uh, for example, we had more doctors and nurses enrolled into the service mm -hmm. so that we had not such a huge burden of patients mm -hmm. per doctor. If you mm -hmm. came to Tech Hospital on a Monday morning mm -hmm. <laughs> and you saw how many psychiatrists and nurses are in there Indeed. in the clinic yes. and how many patients are waiting to be seen, you would say, wow, how do they even manage? <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. So, you know, we get visitors from abroad and they, they just wonder how we manage, but we do manage. They, they, they learn. Now they have things to learn from us. But the other thing is treatment. Mm -hmm. Recently, the Uganda Medical Association, and I don't speak for the Uganda Medical Association, but I am aware that they started a clinic, a doctor's wellness clinic. Mm -hmm. And among the doctors who work there are psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. We offer care mm -hmm. to any doctors. It's a clinic for just doctors, mm -hmm. to any doctors who wish to have a service. If you feel mm -hmm. like your mood is down and you need to speak to somebody, mm -hmm. there will be a psychiatrist mm -hmm. to talk to. Dr. Hafsa, let me, let me end this conversation. Not end, but I have one final question for you. Um, the Ministry of Health has done tremendously when it comes to extending services or resources to the various hospitals to ensure that they actually uh, uh, help their patients in that regard. But then we, we are still plagued with the issue of poor quality service all the same. Why is this happening despite the uh, support from government? Well, the word poor I think is relative. Mm -hmm. But um, what I wanted to say in this regard is that... Um, <coughs> For the health workers, as mm. long as they have um, good mental health, this is mm. where we're going to also start from. Mm. So as long as people have good mental health, mm. they'll be able to do whatever they're supposed to do mm -hmm. in the right way. Mm. So if the medicines are available, they'll be able to be given out properly mm -hmm. and uh, and rationally, I could say that. But maybe one other thing that I need to add is the responsibility mm -hmm. of either side. Mm -hmm. There's the responsibility of the doctors, mm -hmm. and unfortunately that is what they always look out for, mm -hmm. but we also want to push it to the other side of the patient. The patients have some bit of responsibility mm -hmm. that they have to, to have. Mm -hmm. Like when you come to a doctor, you're supposed to you know, give all the information, you know some of these things, give the information, everything that you know about this, your condition. Then if they advise you to do certain things, then you're also supposed to do as you've been advised. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing situations where even people are acting against the medical advice. Okay. People are told to maybe exercise or don't do, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do this, and they're given the medicines. But on top of that, then the patient does exactly the opposite of what does they're being exactly told. The so there will not be any outcome. Wow. Yes, outcomes will be affected by the way the patient may be. Okay, let's talk about the rights this. of the patients. The Minister of Health uh, launched the public uh, the Uganda uh, Patients Charter in October of 2009 mm -hmm. to help with the uh, to, to help with the dissemination of information that could help the uh, the patient become aware of their rights. Mm -hmm. But when they conducted a, a research by uh, Mulango Hospital two and a half years later in 2012, mm -hmm. they discovered that almost 36.5 percent, they oh. didn't know their rights. Mm -hmm. 79 mm -hmm. percent never demanded their rights mm -hmm. and 81.5 mm -hmm. percent mm -hmm. never had of the charter. Why is there, why is there a low penetration of information? <laughs> yes, I think that's a general problem mm. and uh, I think it's the main, it's the mode into which we have uh, used to disseminate mm -hmm. 
whereas people are more into social media this is something that maybe we haven't done as 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 a, as a ministry we have not used that um, that method that mode of uh, communication and yet it is something where the majority of the people currently can get information so late we've, we've learned this with time and we are <coughs> we've, we've taken on the recommendations from that study and uh, yes it is true people don't have not known mm -hmm. but we are now continuing to do this and this is one way when we come out to, to talk about it mm -hmm. you uh, the media group okay. is going to help us in this because okay. you've, you've helped us disseminate a lot of information Amazing. however when we get into the health facilities mm -hmm. we usually encourage our patients to know their rights mm -hmm. and we direct them on what they're supposed Amazing. to do thank you very much dr yeah. hafsa and uh, in your parting <coughs> shots uh, miss olive as we wrap up we have a minute what are your parting shots as we live the weight of the sacrifice of the doctors who does it affect the most and all that yeah so predictably mm -hmm. passing shot yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to request uh, mm -hmm. that people read yeah the patient yes um and that they read it uh well from different perspectives but mm -hmm. one certainly that i'd like them to pay attention to mm -hmm. is the idea that the health worker that's mm -hmm. caught between the 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 Ministry of Health and Government that mm. have the mandate to provide health care mm. and the patients that need health care, mm. this health worker is in the middle and they do need help. Indeed. They need understanding, mm. they need help, they need all the help they can get, they need resources in order to be able to take care of the patient. <laughs> Dr. Olive Colsin, many thanks for having made the time to come. Also, Dr. Juliet Naku and Dr. Hafsa Lukwata, many thanks for having made the time to show up and uh, go out there and make it happen. Thank it's you. really an absolute <laughs> pleasure to have uh, made the, the time to, to speak to us right here on morning at NTV. Well, that is it. That is it for this conversation. We shall take a very short break and return with a lot more information. Keep it here on morning at NTV. I'm Romeo Busiku. Good morning.